Hi everyone, welcome to Torah On Demand. I'm Rabbi Yael Ridberg. We are in the season of hidden miracles and light. And this week's Parashat Miketz is an echo of that theme and the hidden nature of God. You might recall that when young, young Joseph went to look for his brothers all those many years ago, he was asked the most theological question of the entire narrative. Ma tivakesh, he's asked on the way to find his brothers, what are you looking for? We could read it literally, or we could read it as a much bigger question. In the Joseph narrative, we understand that the search, that search to be predicated on the dream life of Joseph. Dreams are the source of so much intrigue. They really can be quite divine. I call them that because for the most part, we don't control our dream life. And so we would call that subconscious life godly. In the Torah, dreams play an important subplot to the action, helping the reader understand what is really going on and how important that subplot is to the overall narrative. Although the dream life of the patriarchs is thin, they each had some kind of human divine encounter in real life that propelled their destiny, thereby rendering dreams perhaps less important. Joseph, however, was the dreamer. He wrestled with the seductiveness of power in his dreams, and while he may have had his father's love and favoritism, his dreams were about the future. God does not appear in his dreams, nor in those of the baker and the wine steward who he meets in prison. God does not appear in the dreams of Pharaoh that we read about this week. God is not even a character who speaks in this narrative, which is a curious shift, of course, from the experience of the patriarchs. Joseph's relationship with God was an internalized theology, not a supernatural one, which makes him quite relatable. Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream to mean that God was looking out for Pharaoh and his future. Pharaoh called Joseph a man filled with Ruach Elohim, the spirit of God. And later on, when Joseph imprisons his brothers, he called himself a God-fearing man. Given the difficulties that Joseph endured at the hands of his brothers, with Potiphar's wife, and when he was in prison, that he remained a man of faith without direct supernatural encounters with God is rather telling. Faith is often shaken through tragedy and suffering. This we know all too well. In Joseph's case, hardship and challenge only strengthened his understanding that what didn't kill him did make him stronger. When he reveals himself to his brothers later in the narrative, Joseph tells them that their selling him into Egypt ultimately led to his ability to save their lives. He offered his brothers morality, not revenge, a connection to the bigger picture, not a small moment of gotcha. Later still, when Joseph became a father, God figured into the naming of his children, Menashe, God made me forget my hardship, and Ephraim, God made me fertile while afflicted. Biblical scholar Aviva Zornberg teaches that at the end of the narrative, when Joseph returned to Canaan to bury his father, he passed by the pit where the story began. According to the Midrash, he went and looked into that pit. His brothers saw that Joseph went to make a blessing over that pit where they had thrown him. He made a blessing over it as one should do over any place where one experienced a miracle. Blessed be God who did a miracle for me in this place, he is thought to have said. Joseph stared into the pit and blessed God, literally called Hamakom, the place, the power that transformed this non-place into a source of life. How many wonders has God done for me in saving me from this pit? is what Joseph is imagined to have said. The Midrash seems to suggest that the pit and Joseph's salvation from it is not an isolated incident, but the very matter of his whole life. So Matevakesh, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? And what are you looking for? These are the questions still with us today. Shabbat Shalom. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.